So I want to wrap up this uh, course for you and talk about the various things we've discussed so far uh, in, a, in, in a very general sense. We've, we've gone over the user interface and the layout. We talked about how to load things into the program, get them back out of it, and mo more or less the general functions and over, you know, the, the workflow, internal workflow in the program, as well as to some external workflow issues in terms of bringing models in or things like that. So let's talk about this from a very general uh, standpoint in terms of a model that I have completed to the sense that it has gone from point A to point B. Now, I start, still am tweaking this because I, I, I'm just a nut like that. I have to get it perfect. And so it's not exactly where I want it, but I'll show you. This is a multi-layer uh, model that I had worked on for quite a while. Um, to uh, and, and this is all done in, in 3D code. Not one part of this was used. Uh, I, did I use an external program to create this? So I've got hard surface shapes, I've got some soft shapes here, almost organic, uh, to make this uh, this gun in the voxel room. And from that point, what I did was I took it over to the Retopo room, where I had retopologized re each one of these and made sure that I had layers. And I did this by hand, but you can do it automatically um, if you find that it's doing what you want it to. Uh, in this case, I wanted to do it by hand to some degree by necessity and to some degree because I, I just wanted to. Um, and so as I selected all my groups here, it ended up being um, 3,635 or 3,635 quads. Uh, and so it wasn't, it's a relatively no, low poly weapon that I then UV unwrapped uh, manually as well, placed them the UV map uh, sections where I wanted, and then I sent it over to the paint room. So if we were to go over to the uh, paint room, let me hide the voxels again. Um, and pull up that actual model, it ended up being one object made up of many that had many materials that I could use to freeze and unfreeze areas and paint them as I saw fit. Now, you'll see that I also have many layers that I decided to use. Now, I have the commercial version, but again, it's only, uh, at the time anyway, it was about $350 that I actually ended up going from an educational version, upgrading to a floating version where I could go from Windows and Mac uh, at the same time or a float between them, I should say, and also uh, then later on bought the commercial version. That's how impressed I was with this application. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Uh, and then uh, we also talked about the, I'm sorry, the tweak room, where if I wanted to, I could have tweaked areas of this, this gun, which I actually ended up doing. I tweaked the handle, and let me turn on uh, the wireframe by pressing 4. I was able to tweak the handle uh, as I saw fit. In fact, if I wanted to raise this up, I could, I could do that, uh, that area there right now. Uh, and just play with around with that until I get it where I wanted it. So, uh, and at that point, I, I, I was pretty much done with the workflow other than the render room. If I wanted to use the render room, uh, then I could use this render room to show off my work and, and kind of do a, a beauty shot of the different um, uh, angles, possibly lighting scenarios, um, maybe have it, um, uh, let's, let's change the rotation uh, and maybe even the height of this this light. So that we can see it a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more nicely. You know, it's just a better uh, scenario depending on what I've chosen. And, and then being able to save these images out, even to do a turntable and export this information out, so that it it looks uh, a lot better uh, and and hopefully shows off your models a lot more cleanly. So we've talked about not only just the general workflow like that, but also being able to tweak the user interface um, and. Uh, and get it to where you hopefully have it in a scenario that, that, that works for you in terms of colors and layout and functionality. So hopefully this has been a great course for you. I've enjoyed teaching it, and hopefully you've enjoyed learning it as much as I've enjoyed teaching it. And uh, I hope that you it's been worth your money. I've tried to make this a comprehensive course in the sense of it being an introductory course, but still covering some fairly advanced concepts and hopefully avoiding some issues uh, that you might run into and uh, and help speed you along. So um, without uh, much further to, to say, I just want to say thank you very much for your time and your effort and your money in terms of, uh, you know, helping me along financially, but also being able to, um, to give you something I hope was definitely worth your money. Uh, for me, I felt like it was. Uh, so if you don't feel like that, please let me know and I'll, I'll do what I can to, to improve uh, further courses and, and make sure that they meet your needs.